as excited for this guy as he is with all his other big fights with his, you know, his, you know, with his nemesis, John Jones. And it was, it was a very, you know. We got DC. We can ask him. Uh, Daniel, hello, sir. What's up, boys? Hi, guys. What's How you doing? What's going on, DC? Matt was just asking a question. Buddies. Oh, man. Matt, do you want to ask DC? Because that was a good question. I was. I was asking. I don't know why I'm asking Jimmy. I know. I, I was know. asking Jimmy to kill time. But listen, champ, how are you, first of all? You doing all right? I'm good, man. Yeah, yeah. I feel good. You know, it's Wednesday morning. I feel great. I and like, I have energy. You, yeah. It's nuts. I've been watching you on the... Um, on the embedded man, it's so cute with your kids because your your daughter looks around the same age as my kid. Uh, you, how old yeah. are your kids, if you don't mind me asking? My daughter's five and my son's six. He turned seven in three weeks. Oh, that's that's so cute, man. No, it's it's nice that you like to have them around uh, during the week. Some people like that, and some people, some fighters are not like that. I was not like that. I get like I love them kind of dark. I love them around, man. That's I love them, Matt, because hey. It's the motivation, right? That's the motivation. That's what you do it for. So when you see in the motivation every day, it's easier to go train and be prepared to do what you need to do. Jimmy, I think he answered my question without me even asking the question. I was talking yeah. to Jimmy, and I was talking about Vulcan, who's a stud, 15-1. and one. He's putting people to sleep. But then I was asking him, I go, I go, you know, DC, the champ, he's been involved with some really high-profile fights with everything, with the John Jones, the drama with that, and, yes. and just, just big fights, man. And, and I'm like, what is the motivation? But I believe you just answered that. Uh, just to the family and, and competition, Matt. You know, I love to fight, man. I love to compete. You know, I love to test myself against other people. I love the opportunity to go out there and do what I do and prove, you know, like, prove, like, let's go. I mean, you said you wanted to do this shit. Let's go do this shit. You know, it's me and you now. Nobody else. Let's go. I love that. And I and I really, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I really, you you are, you. I don't think, Pete, you don't get credit enough for how witty you are. Yeah. How soon did you retweet that? And you, and you, uh, that um, he, um, Vulcan put up a thing where it was uh, a clip, a, a picture of you and John Jones after the one fight, and then he's walking away. A similar picture of him walking yeah, away man. with somebody, but but you you threw it right back. It's great. Instead of letting it bother you, you you threw it back up there and retweeted it. And wh how soon did you come up with with what you said there and, and that and that, I that response? I just saw the picture. Once I saw the picture, I started to, uh, I just was like, oh, this is actually pretty savage. Great job, Vulcan. Great job. But he started this shit, right? So I was being nice to him at first. Yeah. And then he wants to go start putting pictures. Now, I'm just saying what I feel about him. I just say what I truly feel. Like, he's going to get his ass kicked, and he's in over his head. And, Go ahead, Jimmy. You, know, you wanted to read that? No, a DC. Why just... does, hey, why does his face look like it's about to? like melting why does his face look like it's melting what the hell Vulcan? why are your ears dropping down to your damn shoulders what's wrong with you and, and dc just to, re to quote what you read it was a great retweet he thought he had you and you wrote savage post Vulcan uzdemir but since no one knows or follows you which has got to hurt on some level i'll send that out to <laughs> the public Three thousand likes for such a good post seems like a waste quick point though you're no john jones and i'm no jimmy manoa and i'm a lot better than kelly amundsen and then you wrote tap machine hashtag bum <laughs> hashtag <laughs> ufc2 by the way bum is a great thing that's such a 1965 insult it Calling someone a bum is awesome. But in the fight game, it's brutal. It's great. Yes. <laughs> or a tap machine, right? That, I got that from my Russian friends. You know, like anytime they tap, they go, you're a tap machine. That's they, fucking they, they, great. My Russian buddies, number one bullshit guy, tap machine. They have all these little like sayings. And I'm like, you know, Vulcan really did tap to a neck. He tapped to a neck crank. Oh, fuck. A guy named Kelly Amundsen. Uh, Imagine the savage beating I'm going to put on this dude on Saturday. Now, how do you feel also to uh, Jones took a, and again, I know this is not concerning your fight with Uzdemir, no, but it's fine. It's fine, please. Uh, Jones took the polygraph and and did pass it. And there's a part of me that really wants him to not be guilty of this, just because I don't know why it bothers me so much. Uh, and, and how do you feel about that? Him taking a polygraph and Nowitzki's comments on it doesn't appear to be the type of thing you do if you were intentionally doping. You know. Our good friend Chuck Liddell said something yesterday. You know, when you say, hey, someone, someone slipped something in my drink first time, okay, it's a little bit more to believe. Second time, it's a little bit harder to believe. Polygraph tests, I don't know if it really proves anything. Plus, look, 
I'm going to say this. If Ted Bundy can pass a polygraph test, Ted Bundy is <laughs> killing everybody. That is I a good point. He pa- Ted I didn't Bundy can pass a polygraph did he? test. He did, he yes. He passed the polygraph test. Well, that's because he killed uh, the guy who was giving it. <laughs> he killed the guy. The guy's like, well, Ted, you just passed the test. Ted like, gets up and shanks him in the fucking throat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. People can pass them. I, I just, I guess what Chuck said is a good point, too. It, 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 I understand the champ's point. I mean, it's, it's the track record. It's sure. the problem. If you believe it, if you believe it, I don't really care. But, I mean... Man, you just cannot keep doing things wrong and expect people to be okay with anything. It's like, how do you expect Usada to say? And I hope he gets a shorter suspension. But how do you how do you expect Usada to say, okay, we'll give you a year, when the first time you made a mistake, we gave you a year? We can't allow you to just keep making mistakes because then what's the point? Right. Exactly. I'll go make some freaking mistakes. I'll go make some mistakes. Right now, how do you feel to uh, you know who's Demir? Uh, obviously has a one punch knockout power. You face guys like this before, though. Like you, you. I think you know you face guys. Everyone said, "Well, Rumble Johnson," and you you took quite a few of his punches. And the only guy to to put you down at all was it was a head kick with with Jones's shin. Uh, so yeah. you 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 could take a punch probably better than anybody in MMA. I don't think I can think of anybody who has a harder head than you do who can take a. <laughs> I'm, but I'm saying that in a, you know you, you, you're the one punch knockout power doesn't seem to have an effect on you when you fight. You know. I got kicked in the face by Jones. Like, and yeah. I, I didn't even fall down. I didn't even fall down. Like, he kicked me and it hurt me, but I didn't even fall down. I took a shin right to the head, and I kind of started staggering. And I was like, oh, my God, where am I? Am I in San Jose, Anaheim? Did I freaking fly to Vegas? Like, I was lost. And then, see, this is a credit to Jones, too, because if I could have grabbed him and clinched him, I, I think I would have been able to survive. Or... Yeah. If I could have held him in some way, shape, or form, but that finishing sequence, it was a thing of beauty. I mean, I was starting to back up to try to gather myself. He didn't just start punching and going crazy. He kicked my leg and made me spin, right? What do you need? You ever try to hit a pinata after they spin you over and over and over again? Right. It just makes you more, like, discombobulated. I was lost. Like I, once, I, once I spun and tried to back up, then I tripped. And then I was like, oh, my God. And then he jumped on me. I tried to grab half guard. Again, he could have just started throwing there. But he created space, made distance, gave me the illusion that I could get back to my feet. And when I turned to get up, that's when he started laying into me. That's his closing ability. Not everybody can do that. But it took him kicking me in the head and took him using all of his finishing skills to put me in a position where I couldn't defend myself. I'm not going to get knocked out with one punch. Right. It's going to take much more than that. But, again, credit to John Jones and his ability to finish a fight to do all those things that led to me being so lost that I, I couldn't even defend myself. And I'm not sure if we talked to DC since that or no. I don't oh, know if we have. Because so. you were very, very emotional after that, which, again, is very understandable. Yeah. Um, was yeah. that just because of you were still, like you said, discombobulated, or, or were you really feeling, uh, was the emotion very genuine, or was that more just because, again, you had just fought? You know, they say that, too, you know, when you are when you get concussed, like knocked out like that, you are very, that can happen. But truth of the matter is, and I'll be honest with you guys, like, even if it wouldn't have mattered, because it did, the first time I lost to him, I was fine, and I cried. When I lost in the NCAA Finals, I cried. I lost in the Olympic Semifinals. I cried. Olympic bronze medal match. Cried. Every time I lose, I cry. It's what I do. And it's because I put so much of myself into these things. Like, I give so much of me into these competitions that when it doesn't go the right way, it's very emotional. Like, I mean... I put a lot into this, man. I spent a lot of money on training camps. I'm, I'm going for my family for weeks. It's, uh, it's, it's very emotional. I've never really gotten over that. Like, I've never gotten over like the emotion just kind of pouring out of me when it's done. Now, yeah, you see, I can understand that, and I see, and, and other fighters, you know, they, because uh, I know, I understand, I know the how it feels to to lose in there. Um, Forrest Griffin, he's he's similar in a way. He's he's broken down before inside the cage, and uh, but he says that you know people. I, I've seen I I read I heard him in interviews say like uh, you know what um 
I'm, it's horrible right there, but people are feeling bad. Like afterwards, like in the locker room, by the time I'm leaving the parking lot, like I'm, he's back, he's back, he's over it. Like he had to just let that out type of thing. Is that how it is for you? Or are you back? Are you crying for days? Or, and I don't, and listen, gone, I don't look man. at, I don't look at you I'm like gone. a sissy. Believe me. I know how it is. <laughs> no, I'm, it doesn't, it takes forever for me. Like I, you know, the tears may stop, but like the losses stay with me. You know, I've said this, like, um, I have dreams and nightmares about losses I've had over the course of my life. I, I may just be the most competitive person around because they stay with me. Like some nights I wake up thinking about the Olympic bronze medal match when I was wrestling against a guy who was a world champ and I was beating him 2-0 in a nine-minute match with a minute and a half left and gave up three points. And I wake up with freaking sweating like, oh, my God, what happened? Like how could I have done that? And I, I, I feel like that about the fight with Jones. I'm like, man, if he's throwing at me in the two fights, 10 freaking left head kicks, how did I miss that kick? How did I, you know, it's like, it's like those things stay with me, you know? Like, I lost to Kale Sanderson in the NCAA Finals. I took him down. I went to let him go to try to take him down again, and I had a brain lapse. And he turned and grabbed me and threw me on the ground and reversed me. And I was like, how did I do that? Like, it's that type of stuff that stays with me with me all the time dc when when, when uh, john kicked you i think they said that they had been planning on that or there was a thing that you were doing where you were dipping a little bit in that direction um did you did you realize you were doing that or is it something that they uh that, that just no, kind of happened in the it, moment it's something that i've done a long time in my career but you know it it it, it worked so it made these guys kind of seem like uh like geniuses but the reality is we fought eight rounds, and he threw 10, 12 of those same head kicks, and I blocked them all. Good he point. just got one off. You know, like, he, he got one off, and sure. it was good because he got it up there fast. But he did a lot. He did a good job. He did a lot of body work early in the fight. So when I, I, I went body block, he actually went high. Credit to him. But he threw the kick 10, 15 times over the course of two fights, and I blocked them all. So, uh, yes, I was doing that, but... You know, the one that needed to land landed. I was, I was, uh, I was pressuring him. I was moving into him, and honestly, he just threw the kick so fast, and it landed in the.